All right, hello everyone. Um, thank y'all so much for coming tonight. I know you can probably hear me fine without the mic, but for our recording purposes, we will have to use the mic, okay? Um, so if I'm loud, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm Shay Whaling. I'm the elementary school social worker for the Coleman County Schools. I serve all of the elementary schools in our county, and this is Allison Waldrop. She is also the elementary school social worker, but she serves all the K-8 schools in Wilty. And so our job as school social workers is we work to meet all the basic needs of our students, um, food, clothing, shelter. Uh, we remove any barriers that are there that prevent our kids from learning. And so you'll probably never see us, but we're always running <laughs> from school to school. So it is so nice to see y'all tonight. Um, we are here, like Ms. Tucker said, to talk to you guys a little about bullying. We know that students across this country um, talk about being affected by bullying, and we feel like one of the best ways we can help as a community with that is to teach you guys a little bit about it. So the first thing we're going to do is Allison's going to do us a little icebreaker. We want y'all to be involved with us, um, and we're going to test your knowledge, see if you know what bullying is. And Ty let y'all cheat, um, but yeah, y'all can look up there too. <laughs> Ty Watwood is back there controlling for us. <laughs> so I'm going to give a scenario and you say if you think it's joking, teasing, or bullying. A kid who isn't very nice to you trips you in the hall for the third time this week. That's right. A popular second grader tells the other kids in your class to ignore you because your friend is weird. Not sure? That one stays in. And we'll talk when he goes to the next slide, we'll talk about why. Um, a fourth grader comes over to you on the playground and tells you to stop playing with your best friend. We well, read sure that one, sorry. Um, you and a friend like to laugh about the silly shoes that your mom makes you wear. Okay. A popular second grader tells the other kids in your class to ignore you because your clothes aren't very stylish. Teasing. Can you go to the next? Okay, so on the ones where it was kind of, we weren't sure if it was teasing or bullying, um, one of the main things is teasing someone is being mean to you on purpose, um, but it usually only occurs once and doesn't repeat. So saying like, your friend's weird, if they do that like one time, that's gonna be teasing. Um, bullying, we talked about, you know, somebody pushing you in the hallway three times, that's bullying, they're continuing to keep on doing it. Next slide. So the types of bullying, um, physical bullying is going to be hitting, kicking, um, pinching, verbal bullying, name calling, intimidating, um, social bullying, um, excluding others, encouraging others to exclude someone from a group, um, negative facial gestures, spreading rumors, and then cyberbullying, anything that happens over the internet, text, um, stealing other people's login information. Um, or intimidating others online. Okay, warning signs of bullying. Um, at school, if your child goes to school, they don't have any bruises, marks, they come home, those happen during the school day, that's a sign. Um, missing belongings, um, failing grades, loneliness, being exclu um, excluded. You know, just ask your kids, hey, who are your friends? What are your friends' names? Um, and then at home, if they don't want to go to school, changes in their sleeping or eating, um, coming home hungry, frequently crying, um, mood swings, um, saying they have stomach aches, any of those physical symptoms. Ty. Thank you. Um, 
some of you guys are that you some of y'all got tripped up between the teasing and the bullying and that is an easy one to get tripped up on um like allison was talking about the teasing in itself only happens one time that comes with um someone saying something mean to you to hurt your feelings but after you say something to them or they just decide to never do it again it's over from there um, but what we get with bullying is that's repeated. It happens over and over. One of the ones Allison read talked about it happening three times in the week. You got tripped up for the third time. That's when we get into bullying. And y'all were pretty good about the joking part. Joking is everybody's having fun. I come from a family where if we don't, if we're not joking, you we don't love you. So if you're just joking, everybody is having fun, but it can cross the line there. And so this slide talks a little bit about protective factors. Um, protective factors are those things we can do as parents, as adults, as caregivers, as teachers, as just influencers of children that can help protect them when they are being teased or bullied. Um, the first thing is having a positive relationship with technology. Um, a lot of, we found a lot of our students are not necessarily being bullied at home. It, it, I mean, at school, it is happening online. And so just teaching your kids to have a positive relationship with technology, not spending all of their time on it. It is an outlet, but it shouldn't be their only outlet. Um, I always tell people bullying was a thing when I was a kid too, but the, different, the difference was I lived on a farm 20 miles away from school with dial-up internet. I wasn't online when I got home. Okay, so teaching our kids just to have a balance. Practice two is practicing problem solving and coping skills. Kids are not born knowing how to deal with things. They don't know how to work with work through things until they have to. It's our job to help them know how to do that. And if your kid sees me or Allison at school, a lot of the time, that's what we're working with them on, um, building coping skills and problem solving skills. Um, supportive family relationships kind of ties in with structured boundaries. Um, just really modeling those appropriate behaviors teaching your kids how to work through conflict um, and also having boundaries. I know sometimes it's tough as, you know, as a mom having, have, as parents having boundaries, but they really do help kids to feel more safe. If they know there's no phone at the dinner table or you don't get to go to everything that we have, you need time to decompress because that's really what we want is to give kids time to decompress from stress. Um, and lastly, attending a school with a positive climate. We try here in Coleman County Schools to do a good job making sure all of our kids feel like they belong. Um, we really work to make sure all the kids have a t-shirt regardless of if they play sports or not. Um, we really just, we talk about adopting a starfish at the beginning of the year. Even the central office people have a starfish that they want to make that kid feel like they belong. They do things with them. Miss Tucker has one. She takes some books every month. And so just making sure they feel like they belong. Yeah. What can parents do? Um, you're here tonight, so that's the start. Um, recognizing bullying and the warning signs like Allison talked about. We've covered some of these, um, modeling the appropriate behaviors. If you believe that your child is a victim of bullying, please, please, please always call the school, talk to their teacher, talk to your personnel there. We want to be able to help you and your child get through that. Um, and the last one talks about the CCBOE harassment form. You have a copy of it, but we'll go over it a little bit um, here in a little bit. And empower your child to use assertive communication. Um, a lot of our kids, sometimes we teach kids, if someone bullies you, you punch them, you know, you sock them. We're teaching them to be aggressive. And we also are teaching kids, if you're bullied, you make sure you go tell someone. And they kind of cower away. They should go tell someone, but they should also have the wherewithal to say, I don't like what you're saying to me, and you're going to stop talking to me that way. Because again, teasing typically stops if we stand up for ourselves. So let's try to get, I know a lot of you guys were raised where I know I was raised, you always had the retort, right? Someone, we watched a video, um, one girl told this kid, told one of her classmates, oh my God, your glasses are so thick. And she, and he, um, he responded to her and said, better to see you with my dear. She never <laughs> bothered him again. You don't want the uncool kid looking at you. So he, she never said a thing to him again. So let's get back to teaching our kids assertive communication to stand up for themselves. 
Um, and now what students can do. Um, tell a trusted adult, which would be their parent, um, principal, teacher, social worker, anybody. Um, be assertive, like Shay was saying, you know, teaching your kids to, it's okay to stand up, you should, you need to stand up for yourself. Um, practice emotional control, um, just knowing what their feelings are, what feelings are, how to um, address those appropriately. Um, healthy relationships with others in and outside of the school. Um, clubs, all, that's why, trying to make all the kids feel included, um, whether that be sports or other means. Um, be mindful of social media practices. Social media is okay, but too much is not. Um, and then complete the CCBOE harassment form, which Shay is going to talk a little bit more about towards the end. And now we're going to talk about the Jamari T. Williams. Um, he was 10 years old and from Montgomery, Alabama when he committed suicide. Um, that happened in October 2017. And as a result of that, um, the student Harassment Prevention Act was renamed the Jamari T. Williams Student Bullying Prevention Act. And the main thing with that is he was bullied in school, but he was also bullied um, through cyberbullying. So now cyberbullying can be um, punishable and you know addressed in school. Even if it doesn't happen in the classroom, it can be addressed um, at the school. Hi, um, on the next slide, we'll talk a little bit about that harassment report that you guys have in front of you. Another piece of what came from the Jamar T. Williams Student um, Bullying Prevention Act was for us to be very intentional about allowing our parents or allowing people to be able to report harassment. And harassment includes bullying um, and harassment itself as well as sexual harassment. So we want us to be very intentional about providing our stakeholders and outlet to report um, report these things that were happening, and it didn't always have to be in person. This form can be found. I'm not going to read all of that, but it talks about on the form what they what the definitions of harassment include and sexual harassment. But this form can be found on our website, and it can be used to um, for you and your child to fill out if they are being um, if they're being harassed, bullied. Um, or even sexually harassed. Sometimes I found that if you ask your kid, you want me to go up to the school? If, you, if they tell you they're being bullied, they're like, no, don't go up there. They might let you fill out this form, okay? Y'all might can sit down for dinner, fill out this form, and you say, I'm gonna take this to the school. They know mom is not gonna cause a scene, hopefully, and you just turn in this form. And so, if you ever need to use it, please feel free to and tell people it's there because a lot of people don't know that this form is there and can be used for that. All right. Do y'all have any questions for us? This is our contact information. Um, I'm sure I speak for Allison when I say the best way to get in touch with us is through email. <laughs> um, our job, our office is here, but our the nature of our work is out in the school, so we are usually not here. But you're welcome to call and leave us a voicemail. We're both crazy people, and our email comes to our phone. But if, so if you email us, we'll get it a little faster. But we are here to help in any way you need. <laughs> 